Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for January 5th, 2022. Well, my goodness sakes, we had quite a rally yesterday with the Dow gapping big and just a run to the upside. But by the afternoon, there were starting to be a little bit of concern about the rising bond rates, and we saw big tech selling off. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. I apologize for my voice this morning. I'm a little bit weak on my voice. I've got a little bit of a, I don't think I'm catching a cold or something. Um, our weather has been fluctuating like crazy here. And so I, there's probably a lot of that going around. Let's take a look at um, these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. When we take a look at the Dow, um, one of the things that really stands out is how strongly we surged yesterday in a gap up open, but doggone it, we left behind a bit of a bearish candle there, or a, should I say not bearish, but uncertain candle with a little bit of a shooting star type pattern. Now, remember a shooting star type pattern requires a follow through. So it's not bearish unless we were to get a follow through to the downside. And as you can see this morning, we're trying to actually push up. The diamonds is trying to get some more bullishness to the upside. And um, we'll wanna watch that closely. There's been a tremendous rotation into consumer staples and consumer defensive type stocks and that's certainly been helping out the Dow quite a bit so keep a close eye on that now we also want to make note that we are pretty darn stretched out depends on how you want to draw that trend you could leave out that little um, inverted or that um, hammer type pattern but notice right in here that as we push on up we're kind of extended away from our trend and if we were to pull that back a little bit further notice our trend actually may be um, so steep right now that it requires a bit more rest to come into play here in the market. And honestly, after rising from our low here to where we are, 2,200 points um, in just 10, 11 days of trading, really wouldn't be a surprise to see uh, some kind of a rest or pullback in the, in the Dow. Now, let's take a look at the SPY, SPY. SPY struggled a little bit more yesterday, leaving a little bit of a dark cloud cover here. We didn't quite make that move. We popped out, set a new record in the market, but we just could not hold on to it by the end of the day. Noticing right in there that as we struggled around just a little bit with big tech running into some trouble, um, a huge increase um, has occurred in uh, bond yields. And remember, big tech relies heavily on bonds for their R&D and um, their development of new products. And that's creating a little bit of an issue here for some of big tech. And remember, I've mentioned this before, the question that I, I bring up every once in a while, what happens if big tech, those stocks that have been really surging the market up and they dominate our indexes in waiting, what happens if they start to sell? Well, I kind of have this um, this um, belief that if big tech starts to sell off, we could run into some serious trouble. Um, they dominate the indexes so much, both all the, the Diamond Spy and QQQ, that if they start getting a little bit um, sick, if they catch a cold, the rest of the market's going to end up with that as well. So watch that carefully here in the market. We've got this trend here in the SPY and notice that we continue to, if we can continue to consolidate in this move, that may be just perfectly fine, maybe exactly what we need. But if big tech really does get involved in some selling, there may be a little concern here that we don't go sideways, that we actually do a little bit of a pullback into that trend. 
Let's take a look at the Qs. Now the QQQ left behind a bearish engulfing candle yesterday and notice that if we take a look right here, we have a little bit of a um, downtrend starting to show with a lower high followed by a lower high. And the reason that lower high is important is because it broke that little bit of support here in um, that pattern. Now we haven't really failed here. We're not looking terrible. So I don't want to suggest run for the doors, everything is coming apart, that kind of thing. The question will be is if we get some follow through to the downside to the day today and notice we've got a little bit of selling here coming into play. As a matter of fact, that was even affecting, strongly affected Hong Kong last night with our rising bonds as their tech sector sold off pretty strongly as well. So watch that carefully. Now, I don't think there's going to be a major problem here at all unless we break down below this level. Um, if we break down below that level, that could really signal some trouble here in the market. And we'll want to watch that pretty closely. And let's make note that that failure would be, if we drop below that level, would be a failure of our 50-day moving average. And that's where we could start to see a little bit of concern coming into the tech sector. So watch that carefully. And we'll want to keep an eye on those bond yields um, as well as they continue to rally up pretty strongly. If we take a look at um, TNX X here in TC2000, that's a symbol, that's our 10 year treasury yields. Notice our 10 year treasuries um, have just surged dramatically here recently, breaking into um, above that downtrend resistance. And this morning we're pulling back just a little bit on those bond yields. At least early trading showed a little bit of pullback. So we'll want to watch that carefully. If we were to rest or consolidate, pull back in here, hold into that trend and continue up, that could really spell some problems for tech. Um, on those bond yields. And we may get some information that may move this around today with the FOMC. There is a growing concern that the FOMC is going to become much more aggressively hawkish with the inflation that we see in the market. And there is concern that we could start to see a rate increase by as early as the March meeting. And that's got the market a little bit spooked here. And that's one of the reasons we're seeing those bond yields go up. If you see TYX, whoops, the 30 year bonds, they have also surged dramatically here pushing up really strongly, breaking downtrend. So once again, popping through some of these resistance levels, if we were to hold some higher lows in here, maybe grab onto this trend and continue to the upside, that would be a concern for the market. So keep a close eye on that with those bonds rallying sharply, or bond yields rallying sharply. Bonds themselves um, are falling. If you take a look at TBT, bonds, the, the short on bonds um, have been uh, see, seen a dramatic rise here um, on the TBT 20 year ultra short here in that. Now keep in mind there is some price resistance in this chart. We pop through the question now, will, will we hold a higher low in here and continue this process? I don't know and that Fed data today may tell the tell for us. Now let's take a look at that Russell, IWM. IWM, boy, we continue to hammer against that 50-day moving average here on IWM, trying to break through, trying to break through, and we get up there and reject it, get up there and reject it. And we have an awful lot of price resistance in this chart, as you can see, in that um, IWM. And remember, the Russell has often been considered the leading indicator for the market. And if we continue to see that failure here at the 50-day moving average, and let's notice that 50 day is flat and actually moving a little bit lower. So it's kind of putting a lid here on the market and we add in all of that price um, congestion in that area could add some um, issues or worries. Now I don't think there's going to be a major problem um, in IWM unless we start to break down some of these other support levels in the chart and we don't really start to see some major problems in the market unless we fail this big level, this year long worth of price support. If we were to drop underneath that in the Russell, um, that looks pretty, uh, pretty ugly. So if you're looking for a place to hedge, a place to hedge um, yourself, 
um, t picking up some negative delta here on the Russell might be the place to look to maybe hedge yourself. Or you could um, maybe pick up something in um, the inverse, uh, the ProShares Russell inverse, and see if you could catch this um, rising back to the upside if that Russell starts to fall. So watch some of those um, areas closely. Let's take a look at the VIX. Our VIX <clears throat> bounced around quite a bit yesterday. We had a little bit of fear drop out of the market and then at the end of the day, a little bit more fear came back in. And we're still running in this downtrend on this current price action, so no major concern here on the VIX. Um, we are holding on to a little bit of price support, and what we want to watch carefully is if this were to start to spike back up, if this were to, you know, those bond yields and things like that starting to raise some concerns, if the big tech um, sector really starts to sell off, that could be a bit of a problem here, so watch that closely. Now, I do think it's odd, guys, that we've been setting new records this year like crazy in the SPY and the Diamonds, and yet we have still been able to, have not been able to break down below to new lows in the VIX. So that raises that little bit of concern that we'll wanna keep a close eye on. And then let's take a look at our T2122. And as I've mentioned before, T2122 continues to signal an overbought condition and yesterday during the high point of the Dow we were pushed right up in here we had a 98 reading here in um, T2122 so we saw some serious elevation in here and then we got that little pullback on the day pulling us pulling us back in that chart down here around 89 but we're still quite elevated in that move so let's watch that carefully if we were to get some more selling just keep in mind that we have a pretty big open space to the downside if those bears engage and get going and we'll have to watch those support levels pretty carefully if that were to occur however with the data coming out today it's entirely possible we've got um, some news today that maybe we grab onto as bullish news and that could help us push to the upside. So watch that closely. Then let's take a look at our T2108. T2108 saw a nice surge yesterday pushing up. Notice we've got 54% of our companies now, so a little bit more than half of our companies back above their 40-day moving average. That's a good sign for the market. And notice right in here, we just have a massive amount of congestion. The thing that I keep uh, bringing up is that we're setting new highs. We're setting new highs in the market and we're not back up here where we have set new highs in the market before. So we have less participation to the upside. And the question that we have to ask is what happens if big tech does sell off, those leaders start to sell off in this rotation that we've been seeing going towards safety. And if that were to pull back, you could see that could be a bit of a problem for us. So watch that closely. We're setting new highs, less participation, those internals of the market showing just a little bit of concern. And our T2107, um, the percentage of stocks above their 200-day moving average also improved yesterday, but notice it didn't resolve anything. We're pushed up into this downtrend. We're going to have to decide whether or not we're going to be able to break through these price resistance levels, get up here, um, get enough of those stocks moving to the upside that we actually hold a higher low here and start moving up and seeing that recovery. So that's an awful lot of our stocks still below the 200-day moving average, even as we set new record highs in the Diamonds and Spy. And um, that makes you go, hmm, um, uh, we're getting less participation um, as we continue to stretch out to the upside. So watch carefully. And then T2101 did about what you would expect yesterday. Typically we see um, on the market breadth that as we, as we rally in the market, we typically see market breadth decline and we did do that. Now I've mentioned before that I'm, I've never had too big of a worry here on market breadth unless we broke this, um, this wedge here to the upside and we held some price support in here and we've done that so if those bears were to re-engage and I'm not saying they will but if they were 
were to re-engage, we could see that surge and that could signal a little bit of trouble in the market. So watch that carefully. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today because we do have a few things that could move us around here on that economic calendar. By the time you see this video, it'll be may already be out, but we're going to get a reading on private payrolls this morning on the ADP. Now you want to take a look. The Econo Day consensus here has um, ADP coming in um, below the last reading, but that's still a really strong private payrolls number. <clears throat> It really will depend on how the market reacts to that and how that actually comes in. If we happen to miss on that number, that could be a little bit of a problem for us. So watch that closely. That'll be out early this morning. And then let's keep in mind, we've got um, uh, petroleum status. Now we heard yesterday that OPEC is going to increase their production. That won't necessarily uh, affect the current numbers of petroleum status, but we've seen petroleum surge hard the last two days of trading. And with uh, the possibility that more oil may be made available from OPEC, those pumping, those pumps are really ramping up on their production, that could start to um, cause a little bit of a problem here in petroleum. And if we see petroleum start to pull back, that could also have that negative effect on the market. Take a look right here. The Mac Daddy of the day is probably going to be the FOMC because we have this uncertainty with these rising bonds and that worry that the Fed may be coming aggressively hawkish here um, looking forward trying to attack that inflation problem. So watch that carefully. Um, what that, I don't know if the minutes are going to reveal anything more to us, but we could see some volatility around that if we kind of get hints that the, the Fed is moving toward that more aggressively hawkish stance. So watch that carefully. And then let's take a look on our earnings calendar. We have a pretty light day on earnings. <clears throat> um, uh, let me grab... Um, here we go. Um, on that earnings report, we have um, just a few companies that really rise to the notability um, today. So let's take a look at um, UNF. Now UNF reports um, this morning, I believe. So you'll want to keep an eye on UNF today. I'm trying to break that downtrend. This is a nice little rising pattern here. Breaking that downtrend, you can see the inverted head and shoulders pattern that is formed in here. Trying to bust through some resistance levels and hold a higher low. So if we get a good report in here, we might be able to continue to extend that trend to the upside. Keep an eye on UNF. And then later this afternoon, we're going to hear from RPM. Um, RPM showing a little bit of bearishness, a um, little bit of toppiness maybe starting to happen, but we're just pulling back into that trend. We have broken some price support in here, so that is a concern. We'll want to watch that one. And SMPL, um, SMP, it looks like SMPL has already reported this morning, so keep an eye on that. It's perking up here, trying to follow that upside trend. And again, this is that consumer defensive um, sector, um, anything food related, those consumer staples, we've seen an amazing rotation here over the last few weeks into those um, boring old safety plays. So keep an eye on those. So with that, guys, um, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, if you could do me a quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you feel these videos are worthy or helpful to you preparing for the day, if you could please click those thumbs up buttons, leave the brief comments that continues to help the channel grow. And I just want to thank, thank you so much to everyone who does do that. And also for those folks that aren't members of Hit and Run Candlesticks and Right Way Options and would like to help support this content, you can do that with a buy me a coffee link that's just below the title of the video. And thank you so much to everyone who has. It's allowed me to do some upgrading and changing here. Um, in um, the um, 
the YouTube channel and there will be some more changes coming here in the very near future. So watch for those and thank you so much everyone for your kind support. Let's take a look at uh, some stock setting up and please keep in mind guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You should do your own due diligence and make sure you understand the risk of every trade. You should never ever ever blindly follow someone else's trade ideas. So with that being said, let's take a look. I set another alert here um, yesterday on Merck. Now Merck is um, rising up here. This is one of those sectors, healthcare drug manufacturers, that has been really, really strong this year. And although Merck has been kind of beaten down here recently, notice this nice little constructive pattern in here and that possibility that we could perk on out and run up here and test some resistance levels up here around 80 81 in that chart might be worth keeping an eye on that one now i'm gonna have to jump over and i'm gonna have to go right into some of these more boring stocks and you guys know that i've been talking about philip morris for a while and Philip Morris continues in that upside surge as we run into these consumer defensive stocks, consumer staple stocks. They're looking very, very strong. Now, I wouldn't want to chase this one at this point, but any rest or pullback in here that holds on to trend would set up that next opportunity here in Philip Morris. So keep a close eye on that. You know, I think um, Coca Cola, this move in Coca Cola yesterday, remarkable um, surge yesterday in coke i wouldn't chase it here but this breakthrough up here maybe a little rest a consolidation a little pullback and i would be looking for some opportunities in coke um, pepsico had a little bit of selling yesterday a little bit of back and forth you know we've tried to pop didn't quite go got a little selling in here but here's another stock that has just been running strongly to the upside and another consumer defensive stock. Really, really strong, showing bullishness and I think a little bit more rest in here and we certainly could see PepsiCo <clears throat> moving on up to the upside. Take a look at KHC. KHC surged like crazy yesterday. I talked about this one yesterday and that possibility it may move up into to some resistance. I had no idea it would move that strongly um, yesterday. And if you take a look in here, breaking um, into this little area, there's quite a little bit of price resistance in this area. And we could end up in a little bit of a chop zone here, but watch that carefully. We've been surging up nicely in this trend. So a little rest or pullback to hit into that trend and hold some support. We may just get the energy we need to push on through to the upside. I think it would be wise to be keeping an eye on stocks like AT&T. And you guys know I've been mentioning this one, AT&T pushing up off of this bottom. These are big dividend payers. As you can see, I have dividends um, looking forward. These are the forward dividends. So as price goes up, that dividend yield falls. But keep a close eye on that. Um, these big divvy payers, that safety play, is really coming on strong. So watch that carefully. Any rest or pullback here, AT&T, may be an opportunity to buy. You can see stocks like CLX that have moved up strongly. Old, boring dividend players, um, payers getting some strength. Um, SJM, Schmuckers, moving up strongly, breaking through some resistance levels in the chart, and may be ready to attack some highs here and even break out. You can see her Hershey. Hershey has been running to the upside strongly. Again, big old boring consumer staple um, showing lots of strength here in the market. And that really has been a theme here as we've been stretching to the upside. More and more of these defensive sector stocks picking up. And what that tells me, guys, is there's a rotation going on. Institutions, I believe, have been rotating from the high flying tech stocks. They're softening up there and they're moving over to more defensive plays. And that could be a warning of trouble ahead. So keep a close eye on those, some of those defensive sector stocks. We've also seen quite a move in utilities. That's not something 
something you would typically see in a bullish market that is um, so wildly bullish as we have been here recently is to see a surge in something as boring as a dividend paying utility. But we certainly have seen that in that breakout up in here. So keep a close eye on some of those stocks. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Have a great one, everyone.